Hey guys, Justin here. I've been getting a lot of questions lately about steering ratio that I wanted to clear up in this video. First, I'd like to thank the guys at OBRL for sending me this race replay. I am away from home right now, so I don't have any way to record races, and these guys sent me over some race footage to you, so thanks a lot to them. And then also, I'm making a big push right now to get to 3,000 subs before the end of the year. So if you like this video, if you find it helpful in any way, I would really appreciate it if you considered subbing to the channel. I know a lot of people don't use the subscriber tab anymore, so it's a little bit more for ego than for anything, I will admit, but I appreciate it nonetheless. Thanks a lot. So first off, as a brief reminder, steering ratio is simply the ratio between how much you turn your steering wheel and how much the car's wheels turn. So when you have a higher number, like 16 to 1, that means you need to turn your steering wheel more to get the same amount of turn on the car's wheels compared to a lower steering ratio like 12 to 1 where you would turn the steering wheel less to get the same amount of turn on the wheels as 16 to 1. So if you watch any of my guide videos, you'll see that I always recommend 16 to 1 at any track that's at least a mile long, maybe a little more than that, but sometimes I'll do a little bit less, like 12 or 14 to 1 on the short tracks. These numbers aren't gospel though because there really is no fundamental difference between a high steering ratio and low steering ratio. And what I mean is, there is nothing that you can do on 16 to 1 that you can't do on 12 to 1. As opposed to something like brake bias, where on a high brake bias your car will actually perform differently under braking than if you're on a low brake bias. But the reason that I give such a definite recommendation for steering ratio though, is because of what I believe will fit the most people's driving style and build the best habits. Because when I have somebody come up to me and say, hey, I run 12 to 1 and I do great, and then I say, okay, that's awesome, that's what you're comfortable with, there's no fundamental difference between 16 to 1 and 12 to 1, if you can make it work for you, then that's just as good as anything else. A quick aside too, it really matters what wheel you have as well. I have a Logitech G920, so 16 to 1 on my wheel with the smaller radius of the wheel is going to be a little bit different than the 16 to 1 that other wheels have. For instance, the NASCAR rim for Fanatec. When I tried that out a year or so ago, I could not get the car to turn with 16 to 1, and what I was comfortable with ended up being 12 to 1. So remember, it's all relative speaking, but in general, if you have a really large wheel, that when I say 16 to 1, I'm kind of meaning more 12 to 1, 14 to 1 for you. So why do I always recommend higher steering ratios for large ovals? Well, we have to think about what that type of racing rewards and what steering ratio most naturally achieves those things that these tracks reward. So these days on iRacing, large ovals really reward tire saving and tire management. So in my opinion, 16 to 1 steering ratio does two things that really builds good habits with tire saving. The first thing is smoother steering. When you have a larger steering radius, the turns and mid-corner corrections that you make are more likely to be smooth than if you're on a lower steering ratio. Now, you can achieve the same thing on a lower steering ratio, it's just that now your movements have to be even more smooth and even more gradual than they would be on 16 to 1. In my opinion, it's also very setup dependent too. In the current iRacing, pretty much all of the fixed series ovals have tight setups in one way or another, at least tight on entry and center. So because of this, we'll be making less mid-corner adjustments with our wheel and really focusing on the smoothness of our line and our steering. The second thing that I believe a higher steering ratio does is it penalizes you less for overcorrections on your wheel. Not in terms of lap time, but in terms of pure tire wear. One of the biggest mistakes people use on their long run is using their wheel to compensate for a bad entry or a bad line. Even slightly forcing your car to go against its natural flow with your steering wheel has really bad implications on right front tire wear. Let's say that you enter a corner too tight and to compensate for that you accidentally turn your wheel about one inch too far to the left. Well with a lower steering ratio that penalizes you more because that one inch represents more wheel turn than if you have one inch on 16 to 1. But notice both of these benefits around 16 to 1 are not built around driving the fastest lap time, they're built around making mistakes and minimizing them. I would argue that a perfect driver would prefer 12 to 1 over 16 to 1 for a couple reasons having to do with squeezing a little bit more time out of their laps. Because they would be able to turn gradually in a way to where the smooth steering is still there on 12 to 1, and they wouldn't be making mistakes so that they didn't have to take advantage of 16 to 1 minimizing their mistakes for them. So what are the benefits of a lower steering ratio like 12 to 1? Well, I'm going to have to admit that I already lied to you guys in this video a little bit, and that is that there is a bit of a fundamental difference between 16 to 1 and 12 to 1. 
But that fundamental difference is that when you're turning your wheel the fastest you can turn it in the car, that turn is gonna happen slightly faster on the 12 to one than 16 to one. Now, when is this useful? It's useful for catching cars that are starting to spin or overcorrecting or doing something that you can kind of catch yourself. Now on a tight setup, that doesn't really happen too often, but if you're running something that's loose, maybe an open series, maybe iRacing comes out with a fixed set that's pretty loose, this low steering ratio is really good for helping you when you're just not sure that you're gonna be able to keep the car straight the entire race. And if the car is wearing the right rear more than the right front, while smooth steering is still important in general, you're not gonna to have to worry about roasting your right front by not being smooth enough on the steering. Pros are pretty split from what I've heard between lower steering ratio and higher steering ratio, but the ones that run lower steering ratio I've seen have tend to be the guys who have been around on iRacing for when everything was just slidey, loose. They called it ice racing. And that sort of carried over and they've been able to drive with enough precision and smooth this one required to where when they have those situations where they need a lot of quick turn, then they're able to have a slight advantage over those who are running 16 to 1. Whereas the pros who choose 16 to 1 are just going for maximum smoothness at all times, really prioritizing never putting a tire in the wrong place. And maybe giving up a hundredth or so in the process here or there. But there is one more use for low steering ratio that I haven't talked about yet, and that is for qualifying. Now for my videos, I don't really recommend differences between steering ratios and qualifying and race mainly because I don't like switching back and forth. It just doesn't feel good to me. I feel like I'm not in my groove if I'm not on a steering ratio that I'm not used to. But in general, I've found times where lower steering ratios have just improved my lap time because of how I can make corrections really quickly. And because we don't care about tires and qualifying, there's no real downside to the lower steering ratio. I would just be cautious at forgetting to turn your steering ratio back up after the qualifying session because I've definitely done that before too. But those quicker steering inputs can really help you squeeze an extra hundredth or two out of times in qualifying, so I would also mess around with that. So I hope that clears some things up because I definitely get questions about steering ratios at least once every couple guide videos because it does seem like I say them in a very definite way. You need to do 16 to 1 and that really isn't what I mean. I'm just giving my opinion on what will be the most helpful for the majority of people. It can also be something to be dynamic too. If you're driving somewhere and you're really struggling with tire wear, you can try raising your steering ratio. And if you're driving somewhere and you're really struggling with keeping the car straight or even struggling for speed in a way, maybe try lowering the steering ratio and see if that does anything for you. But in general, my recommendation for will always be 16 to one, at least for the race runs, because I think that on large tracks, 16 to one will provide the average iRacer with the largest amount of benefits versus what it takes away. But what steering ratios do you like to use? Leave a comment below and let us know. All right, thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you all on the track.